Production support for In Focus is provided by Smithville, a locally owned business serving central and southern Indiana since 1922 with residential and business internet, voice and security services. Smithville, local pride, global technology. Information at smithville.net. Hoosier Energy, providing electricity for central and southern Indiana electric cooperatives and their member customers. Information at hepn.com and by viewers like you. Thank you. A drug many people use for cold, allergy, or hay fever relief is the main ingredient in another substance which has been responsible for millions of deaths. Pseudoephedrine is the main ingredient in methamphetamine. Officials in at least two states have passed laws requiring a prescription for pseudoephedrine. Should Indiana legislators follow suit? We'll discuss that and other issues as we put methamphetamine in Indiana in focus. Thanks for joining us for this edition of In Focus. I'm Stan Jastrzewski. If you have questions for one of our studio experts during tonight's program, email us at infocus at indiana.edu or give us a call toll free at 1-800-987-9848. The use and abuse of methamphetamine has been a growing problem for more than four decades. The Midwest's meth epidemic has increased in part due to steady trafficking from outside the region, as well as development of new clandestine ways of manufacturing meth. As WTIU Shamika Neely reports, officials are working to require a prescription for its key ingredient, but pharmaceutical companies may not agree. The Office of National Drug Control Policy estimates more than 10 million people ages 12 and older have used methamphetamine at least once in their lives. Now some government and law enforcement officials are trying to make it harder to buy the drug's main ingredient, pseudofedrin. The DEA ranks Indiana as number two in meth labs. So we're not doing very well. The idea of making ephedrine and pseudoephedrine products a prescription only drug is absolutely, in my opinion, the way to go. Uh, you eliminate that one particular ingredient and you've eliminated methamphetamine. Oregon officials noticed the same thing and they've seen a dramatic decrease in meth activity. Well, um, Meth arrests have declined 20 percent um, uh, within the two years immediately following uh, enactment of the, uh, the meth legislation, which involved more than just meth lab eradication. Uh, we've gone from, we used to take down about 500 meth lab incidents a year. Um, this year, so far in 2010, we're up to five. Um, last year, we finished with 13. Marvel has been in law enforcement in Vigo County for more than two decades. He says when he took office, the Vigo County Jail spent $487,000 a year on prison or medical care. In 2009, the fees totaled more than $1.3 million, and the sheriff says that's largely due to meth. It didn't take very long to find out that there was a methamphetamine problem here in this county. One of the committee members said, Sheriff, uh, methamphetamine pro is a problem that you all have over there in Vigo County. We don't have it over here. And I said, with all due respect, sir, you have it. You just don't know it's, it's there. States like Oregon have passed a requirement that pseudoephedrine be obtained only by prescription. As a result, Bovet says the state has seen a 90% decrease in meth lab busts since 2007. It took us quite a number of legislative sessions and a long time and we had to fight a lot of battles. In Mississippi, they were able to get it done quicker using the Oregon experience, but the same amount of battles, just much more condensed. Uh, will Indiana uh, pass their own laws? I don't know. You know again, we're battling um, large drug companies with huge resources that see this as a billion dollar business for them just in the state of Indiana alone. Uh, so it, it's a battle. Though an ordinance requires a tracking system be put in place, the Indiana State Police reports more than 1,000 meth labs were discovered in 2008. Tonight, we'll discuss the possible impact of requiring a prescription for pseudoephedrine as we put the state's addiction to methamphetamine in focus. 
And joining me this evening is my new co-host, Sarah Whitmire. Sarah, tell us who will be talking with you in the WFIU studios tonight. Thanks, Stan. Coming up, we'll be speaking to Rob Bovet, and he's with the Lincoln County District Attorney's Office in Oregon. That'll be coming up later in the program. Thanks, Sarah. And joining me in the studio this evening are State Senator Bob Dyg, who represents parts of Gibson, Posey, and Vanderburg County, Posey County Prosecutor Jody Ebelhawk, and Indiana Retail Council Pro Director of Office Operations Nicole Lupano. Thanks to the three of you for being here. Uh, I'd like to have the same question answered by all three of you, starting with you, Senator, going down the line. What, if anything, can the Indiana State Legislature do to try to help curb the state's meth problem? It occurs to me the three of you might have somewhat different answers for that, but we'll start with you. Well, Stan, the last few years we've looked at this, and matter of fact, this year we have a study committee looking at this and talking about making a prescription drug. In my opinion, that's the only way we can do it right and stop it altogether, or at least uh, have a biggest chunk cut out of it. Uh, I have legislation the last couple of years to allow um, only pharmacies to be able to sell that. Pharmaceutical companies fought us, the retail industry also fought us on that, but I think it's the only way to do it is to make it a prescription drug. Jody, what do you think? Right now, we have individual logs at individual pharmacies. So each pharmacy keeps an individual log. There's three possibilities. One is we unite that system so that we have a log for all pharmacies throughout the state. There's a lot of problems with that, the biggest one being jurisdictional issues. If I go to Vanderburg County and buy my first box, I go to Posey and buy my second box, where did I commit the crime? It's an issue that the legislature and the courts have not caught up with yet. The second thing we can do is to make it a Schedule 5 prescription drug, which just means you have to go to the pharmacist and ask for it. Um, I'm not sure that's the answer either because I think that's pretty much where we're at now with showing the IDs and things like that. I think really the only answer is to make it a prescription drug that requires a, a legal prescription from a physician before you can acquire it. And what about the response from businesses uh, who are hearing that this should be a prescription only drug, Nicole? I think electronic tracking would be a sufficient option. It's already in place in Illinois, Iowa, and Kentucky. and with all the neighboring states on board, I think that would, um, I think that would, um, <clears throat> Well, it would certainly help curb the problem. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Why, in the computer age that we live in, why do you think we haven't come to a point yet in this state where we have the ability to track from pharmacy to pharmacy who is uh, you know, engaging in things like smurfing where, where groups of people go from one pharmacy, buy all the meth, the ingredients they possibly can, go to another pharmacy nearby, buy the same thing over and over. Why aren't businesses doing a better job, do you think, helping the state uh, track those things? And then we'll come back this way because I'm sure these two have different answers at the same time. Well, right now, I think paper logs are hard to track. I think an electronic tracking system would work best to get businesses all on board. Um, a system that Senator Yoder proposed last ses session for electronic tracking would have a stop alert feature so that it would stop the point of sale, it would stop it at the point of sale rather than allowing illegitimate users to continue to buy. And would that help you, Jody, as a prosecutor? It would help. I don't think it solves the problem. Right now, you can go into a pharmacy and purchase a box of pseudoephedrine for four to five dollars for the generic form. You can sell it for anywhere between 30 and 50 dollars on the street. So even those who aren't using methamphetamine are making money off of it as a way to supplement their income. And so I don't see that logs are going to prohibit the smurfing. And Senator, you said that there was an, uh, a backlash from businesses who didn't want this extra um, sort of responsibility on their shoulders. Do you think that's a, a fight that is worth fighting and worth trying to win despite that sort of backlash? Well, uh, certainly there's a cost involved to the retailers. Um, CVS Pharmacy, for example, has, has their own tracking uh, system within their own CVS pharmacies, but nothing's all tied together. Now, the issue we have down in Posey County, where I live, Kentucky and Illinois are our neighbors. Uh, people, individuals go to Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana and buy it. There's nothing tied in together. So we need to find some way to be able to track that all together. I want to come back to this discussion in just a second, but right now we have to go over to Sarah in the radio booth. Sarah? Thanks, Stan. 